Hi everybody. Uh, today we're going to do a quick little introduction to section 6.1 all about integrals. Hopefully this will be actually a quick little introduction. Okay, so uh, what I want to talk about here is this the old uh, equation of d equals rt or distance equals rate times time. Now typically when we've looked at distance and rate and time we haven't really thought about them as functions but in calculus we do that. So what I want us to think about here is the geometrical meaning of distance equals rate times time. Let me give you a quick example. Okay. In the past, we typically have thought of them as just quantities, right? So you get have a rate that's you know five miles per hour, okay, and a time that was two hours, and you multiply those together, and voila, we have ten miles because the uh, hours uh, in the miles per hour and the hours cancel out and you're just left with miles. Pretty straightforward idea. Okay, but what I want us to look at today is how else we might represent the d equals rt equation. Let's imagine for a second we have some axes, or let's not imagine, let's look at these axes I've drawn. And um, along one axis, it's typical to have time. And for the time being, we're just going to look at positive time because in the physical world, that's what we have. And instead of looking at the um, single quantities as we had before, let's look at velocity or rate as the y-axis. So the y-axis is going to indicate velocity, and we can now talk about functions of velocity. Now, typically what we're going to be looking at, or typically what we've looked at uh, uh, is it has probably been a constant velocity. So here's a constant velocity. Maybe this is a velocity over time. Okay. That was as simple as five, a constant velocity of five. Now, if I look at the velocity of five from time, and we're going to make it a little bit more interesting here, time t equals one, two t equals four. Okay. So that's a dis that's a the amount of time elapsed. That's not a very good place to put a four, is it? Put the four right here. Okay. The time elapsed here has been three seconds, and we've had a constant velocity of five, which makes the distance traveled 15. Let's go ahead and indicate that on the picture. Good enough. Okay, here's that. And here's that. So if you notice something that happened here, we now have an area, okay? This area is three by five, this is 15. So the distance traveled is 15, and notice that that can be looked at as an area on this graph. So in calculus, in, in, in integral calculus, what we're gonna be looking at next, we have this idea of velocity as being a function of time, and the x-axis is time, and now we can look at the uh, um, quantity, the, pardon me, the distance traveled as an area. Okay, so in our case, distance and area, uh, when we're talking about a function of velocity, are the same thing. So in calculus, it's much more interesting for us to ask, well, what about when we have a variable velocity? So now we have a variable velocity. I'm going to go ahead and graph a velocity function that looks like this. And we'll allow this velocity function to be something very simple, like t squared. Can you imagine a situation where this might come up? Okay. What kind of uh, uh, velocity function are squares? Okay. Um, there are actually plenty of very real world examples where this happens. I'll leave it to you to think of uh, a pretty common one. In any case, we have velocity increasing at a squared function with time. Okay. And what's happening here is if I start at t equals zero, and I go up to t equals 2, okay, we can figure out what the velocity is at t equals 2. That's going to be 4. But what's the total distance traveled? Well, it's the same meaning as we had before, right? It's simply, there we go. the area enclosed by the curve is going to be the total distance traveled. So whatever this area is. Anthony DeRuji and Brian Turbush, please come to the main office. Um, whatever the distance traveled is, 
it's going to be represented by this area. Okay? So if we have a velocity function, we know how much time has elapsed, we can use the area under that function's curve to determine the distance traveled. Okay? We're working backwards in a certain sense. So um, this is a pretty powerful thing. What we want to do in section 6.1 is find ways to determine what the area under a function looks like if we know the velocity function. Okay, so that's just a little teaser as to what we're going to get into in the next couple of days. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you have a couple diagrams and a sense of how area, time, and uh, distance are related to each other. Thanks, guys, for watching.